Greetings, everyone, to Gamers on Gaming first response video. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten to record part three yet. Uh, I've just been kind of swamped, but it's already written out, so I'll get to that. Um, I'll get to that as soon as I possibly can. But uh, this is a response to WC3SNFSS. How you doing, buddy? Um, he asked me what did I think of the final boss for Final Fantasy X. Uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, basis of this is, well, yeah, uh, the basis of this is, seems to be stemming from when I mentioned the lather, rinse, repeat uh, bosses that you generally get with uh, most games and the poor pacing therein. Um, as I mentioned when I first started my LP of uh, Final Fantasy X, it's a... Uh, I've only beaten the game once. I've played through it like four or five times, but I have I've always stopped roughly halfway through because as I mentioned earlier, I um I wanted to play international version. It was kinda like why am I playing this again if I'm eventually gonna play the international version and I'm gonna get the same story. Not that the story isn't good, it's just I really want to play the game with the differences that were in um the international version. So I can't remember it all too well from um, the last boss fight, but uh, well, I can't remember them too as vividly as I remember some other things that I have, you know, obviously gone over more. Uh, what I do recall in um, in fighting the last boss was it was pretty much just advertised. Uh, it was it was one of those cases in which you kind of know what you're getting into before you get into it. So there's not much to complain about, really. I mean, they told they they pretty much tell you they write it. They pretty much yeah they pretty much just tell you everything you need to know before you fight the very last boss. So by the time you get him, you should be very well. You should uh, you should understand what you need to do very well by that point. Uh, as far as fighting sin, it's pretty much well. Fighting sin, it's a little bit more difficult. It was more difficult for me when I first did it. I, uh, well, actually, the only time I did it, it, I, it was a little, um, a little on the hectic side. I kind of just managed to squeak through with my, well, I just managed to just squeak through. I actually had to take a break from playing the game for a little bit to kind of come up with some combat ideas to you know better understand what I what exactly I should be doing but that's all I can remember about that uh, as far as me adamantly defending Final Fantasy 10 you are absolutely right uh, but I don't I don't think I defend Final Fantasy 10 in the sense of someone who hears like you said Spoonie his review I have seen some of his review I actually kind of stopped watching it so I could have more genuine uh, more genuine responses when things occur in the game. But for this, I will watch the last part of his review so I can give you a uh, my if you want my rebuttal to his uh to uh, his what happens with the last boss. I'll probably watch it before I play the last boss and then explain some things. But um the thing about Spoony in his video and I guess it has bled onto me from when I started recording the game to me what I say when I'm uh, playing it. I don't look at Spoonie and his review in Final Fantasy X as, or even even though I agree with a lot of what he said in Eight, I've never played Eight, but I've watched a playthrough of it, and it's actually the very first playthrough of anything I've watched about in something where I actually start to nod off in. But it, it wasn't. It was not as bad as he made it out to be. It, all those bad points he pointed out were genuine in, in 8. But at the same time, he really was just bitching about nothing in some cases. Now, I'm not saying this is he's a bad reviewer, he's a horrible person, or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he was more of a critic of the game than he was a reviewer of the game. Because I've watched and seen many of... Uh, even though I, I, I watched it about three playthroughs of the game, I kind of had to jump back and forth because uh, Voltage McGammer, if anyone watched this LP, he actually started to play it. And it's awesome watching him play it because he does voices for his characters. And I kind of like, he kind of inspired me to try to do voices for my characters. But, uh, yeah, 
uh, he he started playing it, and he made he actually pointed out some very interesting things about the game. He he made the game seem really interesting and fun. And had I been watching his uh, his his play through the whole you know whole way through the game, I probably would not have nodded off. I kind I had to watch the uh, silent LP of it, or a silent playthrough of it. So I guess that's probably what uh didn't hold my. It was it was kind of like I had to pause and keep watching this and watch this and watch them play the card games and all that. It was kind of it kind of droned on and on and on. But um, yeah, in his review of that one, though a lot of things he did say made sense, a lot of things he did point out were true. He didn't recognize any of the things that really worked in the game. He was just talking about the things in the game that kind of pissed him off or things in the game that kind of annoyed him. So uh, I don't call it for me, his reviews are more entertainment than um, facts than uh, real reviews, which nothing's wrong with entertainment. I mean, the guy's got to make money. Anyone's got to make money. And I find his, uh, I find it funny. I found eight funny. Uh, I found some parts of a uh, ten funny. So I can, you know, I'm cool with that. I guess you, can pro- plenty of people are probably thinking, well, you said part of ten funny. Well, th- if you've watched my LP of uh. And I'm not saying this specifically to a WC3 SCNFSS or the Pancake Guy. I'm not saying this this part specifically to him because he's watched my LP of it. He knows what I'm talking about. This is kind of to anyone else who may be watching this and trying to figure out what I'm talking about. If you watch my um, LP of the game, I point out, and if you watch Spoonie's review of it, a lot of things he's mentioned have quote-unquote confused him or quote-unquote didn't make sense to him. The things that I didn't find funny in his video were things that I sit down and talk to you about. I don't find it funny because I don't not find it funny because um well when I first played through the game, I already got the stuff that he didn't understand. Some points that he missed, I understood. Uh, I adamantly def- back to the me adamantly defending the game as I am doing. I, I admit to that. I defend it because when you have there, you can find plenty of people out there who will defend eight, who will explain things to you about eight, who will break everything down for you about eight or seven or in the other ones. But ten, because the majority of people tend to dislike Titus's voice uh, or the infamous laugh scene in ten, people just instantly just want to bitch slap the game left and right. And it doesn't deserve that. It's a great game that people are just squatting on. Now, you have plenty of people who will sit down and say that the game is good. They'll admit to it's good. They say they have a fun time. That's it. You won't get anybody who will sit down and tell you what this means, what this symbolizes, what this works, how does this work, how does this link up to that, where does that link up with this. That's what my LP is kind of for. It. You have, because Spoonie has done his review in the game, you now have a bunch of people who don't like Final Fantasy X, who who would just who don't understand things about Final Fantasy X that Spoonie didn't understand, they will watch his video and now they will point specifically to him, specifically to what they saw, and they'll say, "No, nah, you see, Spoonie said it, and so you know that that's that don't work. It don't make no sense. It don't make sense. They can't be doing oh blah blah blah." And you know you can't do that, folks. I'm not gonna sit here and let any game. Any game that I have that I have experienced, sit down and when I, I guess it sound I guess this is me sounding like a fanboy or anything about Tim, but I, I can acknowledge that there are some issues with the game, that it does have some points to where it, it could be polished, but overall the entire cake of the game is good, it's really a good cake. You get what you're coming in, you get what you're expecting, and. I don't get what Spoonie was expecting because a lot of the things Seymour's hair he talks about that that harkens to a a type of game player that I cannot stand, and it's those who who complain about it. nothing new out in the, in the industry, but they get something different and then they want to sit there and bitch about it. Final Fantasy X is a Japanese RPG. You should get this at this point. Reviewers like Spoonie and even reviewer that I like, uh, Yatsin, uh, Zero Punctuation, uh, those two, uh, Yatsin's a bit more frank about it, he doesn't like JRPGs because he finds the characters smoky, droopy, stupid, and he doesn't like the characters' clothing and whatnot, and Spoonie doesn't seem to like the characters because of their clothes and whatnot, or the weapons, that their weapon style they decide to use, and it just pisses me off, why don't you people shut up, 
It's a different style of game. It's Japanese one, so that's a culture that it's a culture diff barrier right there that you have to just sit down and be an adult to acknowledge acknowledge. And it's a different type of story. I mean and it not not story. what I mean is it's a different it's a different race of people that they're actually writing about. Spoonie talks about how come Titus is able to hold his breath for hours on end and whatnot, but he's not human. He's humanoid. They're not on Earth. They don't exist in the same things that we do. Their deaths aren't even the same as ours. So they're not human at all. Take that take that idea and throw it out the window. They're not human. So why are you sitting out here attributing to them human-like qualities? Yes, they are humanoid. Yes, they have various human qualities. Yes, they have various similar human characteristics. But at the same time, that does not a human make. We are our own species. We are our own thing. And just because it looks like you doesn't mean that it is you. I mean, there are several other differences about him as well. The Guado are humanoid, but there's a lot of characteristic differences about them. They seem to have longer fingers or longer nails or something like that. You can see the veins on the side of their faces much easier. The hair color is a different style and all that stuff. There are a lot of vast different qualities about them. You don't talk about how come the Guado were, different, were weird clothes. You don't. Well, actually, he did talk about that. He talked about Seymour. I just said that. So, you know, why are you, just because it looks human, just because it seems to have the qualities and characteristics, it's not even on the same planet. You don't know what they're wearing has to do with anything that they believe in or any symbolism that's supposed to go in there. So why are you sitting down there, comp why are you sitting down here asking for something when it probably doesn't even really matter? It's just what they decide to wear. I'm, I don't get why people want to sit here and complain about that. It's the, like I just said, it's a different culture thing, so that's just a stupid thing to complain about altogether. I'll get into the. It's a. It's actually a thing that I want to bring up, probably in the later ep, in another episode of the uh, Gamers on Gaming, but for right now, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but for Spoonie, how he referred to the AI, I guess I'll sit down and. Uh, I mean, for the last boss. Um, I told you my feelings on it before I watched this review, and I guess for this uh, response, what I'll do is I'll I won't watch the entirety of his last review about the final boss. I'll watch the part where he talks about the final boss, and um, I'll tell you what I think of what he said, and whether I agree, disagree, or anything like that. And uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. 